you know, this camera is a lot like an eye. And I wanted to find out how the eye really works and how similar to a camera it really is. So I'm here at the Scapin's Eye Research Institute in Boston to talk to Dr. Reza Dana, a senior scientist here who's also the director of cornea service at Mass Eye and Ear and a professor at Harvard Medical School. So you study the eye, and I've always kind of thought of the eye as like a little camera in the front of my head. Is that too far off? Is it, is it like one of these? It is. Um, as you mentioned, you've got two cameras, though. So you've got two eyes, and we'll talk about that. The, the, the function of the eye basically is to capture images. It does that by allowing light to hit the cornea in the very front of the eye, just like the light hits the lens of the camera. The lens will then bend the light, have it be focused onto the retina. Between the cornea and the retina, you have the lens in the eye that allows for even sharper focusing of that light. So uh, the function of the eye basically is to provide information that is visual, have it go to the retina in the back of the eye where the information is processed and then basically packs of information are sent back through the optic nerve. There are about a million um, nerve fibers between the eye and the brain from each eye. And it's like a cable with multiple lines or wires in it. Yes. These two cables get to the brain and then they connect inside of the brain to allow basically sight. It sounds really a lot like the way a digital camera works because you've got the, the light part, you've got the sensor in there instead of the retina, and then it has a bunch of wires that go to the computer in here that interpret it as a, as a picture. Right, right. The cornea, the part that you mainly study, is, I mean, I guess you could call it what looks like the, the bubble on the outside. It's the part before you get to the colored part of the eye, right? Correct. The cornea is in the very front of the eye. It's round and it's transparent. And its job basically is to bend light. And then you have the colored part, which we call the iris. Uh, the center of the iris is the pupil. Uh, the iris will regulate the amount of light, again, very similar to the diaphragm in the, ca in the camera. So in dim light, the pupil will be large. In very uh, well-lit environments, the pupil will become very small to minimize the amount of light that gets back to protect the retina from damage. So. You study how this works, but you also study how it doesn't work when something goes wrong. Right. What happens when there's a problem in that system? I mean, people are then blind or, or can't see very well, but it's one of those steps that goes wrong, or more than one, right? There are many, many steps that can go wrong. Like any other tissue in the body, you can have problems with blood flow to the eye. You can have inflammatory problems where your immune system basically attacks the eye, like in autoimmune disease, people with lupus or arthritis can develop problems with the eye. Aging causes problems with the eye, as it does in many other tissues. The lens becomes more stiff. Uh, the eye can become too dry. Uh, there could be degeneration of layers of the retina causing problems. Diabetes can affect the eye. Uh, tumors can affect the eye. So virtually anything you can imagine that could go wrong, can go wrong in, in some eyes, and sometimes more than one thing goes wrong. I'm going to show you a drawing of the eye in cross-section. So light normally hits the cornea and is bent to go into focus right on the retina. Now if the bending happens too much, the light will be focused in front of the retina. That's what a nearsighted person as is a problem. If the light doesn't bend as much because the cornea is too flat or perhaps the eye is too short, the light will be bent and it will be brought into focus behind the retina. That's the far-sighted eye. That's the optics of the eye. To me, as someone who sees well, it really seems like most of what we experience about the world is through vision. Yep. So being able to, to fix a problem with that must make a huge difference in somebody's life. Huge. Uh, it's hard for those of us who see to really even imagine what the life, you know, what life would be like without us seeing color, um, other people, cars, uh, media. 
Uh, absolutely. And, and it's interesting. I mean, people have asked many, many times, people have been surveyed as to their greatest health, if you will, nightmare. And loss of sight figures all the way up there along with cancer. These two things are by far the leading fears, if you will, that people have about their health. Well, it's great to know that people are out there working on it and making it better all the time. So I want to thank you both for what you do and for telling us about it. Absolutely. My pleasure.